Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're going to be doing another seasonal championship the first one for a while actually and it's too hot a hatch to handle and uh, yeah it's retro hot hatches in C-Class so not the widest of variety of vehicles but you know should still at least be fun especially since there's a few cars in there that I really rather enjoy driving so uh, yeah and we're getting there in one of the recent favourites that have been added to the game, the uh, Pontiac Firebird. The first iteration of the Firebird and uh, yeah, my favourite iteration of yards. that car. So uh, yeah, although conditions right now do not favour a muscle car of this power and rear wheel drive. Brakes kind of failing me there. Go, let's see what races we're going to be doing and what we're going to be getting in. You have at your destination. Just remember, keep your eyes on the road. You can admire the autumn views after you finish this championship. So we've got a pair of Hondas, the Civic Type R and the CRX SIR, uh, both from the 90s, and then another one from the 90s, the uh, Peugeot 205 Rally. And then, oh, we're all from the 90s, I did not realise that. So yeah, then the Renault Clio Williams, and then a pair of Volkswagen so GTI VR6 Mark III, and then the Corrado VR6. So yeah, the GTI there gets the engine from the VR6 below us. So uh, yeah, we're going to go in something that I don't think we've ever used before. Probably because I'm not a massive fan of it, but we're going to go for the Civic Type R. Not a massive fan of it, I'm not particularly fond of the way it sounds or looks, but definitely one of the best hot hatches in terms of handling and power and speed so uh, yeah 182 horsepower and something only weighs 2403 pounds is really really nice got a light uh, weight naturally aspirated 1.6 litre inline 4 engine as well and uh, yeah it's pretty much the darling of the modding scene in a lot of ways as well if you can actually find one that is but uh, yeah great little car just not one that I'm particularly fond of hopefully it will do well here it's quite high in the C-Class, I think it said it was, so uh, yeah, it should do well. High revving engine as well, more than 8,000 RPM. Easily the highest revving engine you're getting to choose from. My problem with these cars has always been the fact that I just don't like the way they feel to drive in terms of the engine. This just doesn't feel like there's enough torque there. It feels very gutless in a lot of ways. But obviously, in terms of actual acceleration and speed, it's going far faster than most cars of its type. So, uh, this is generally how I feel when driving it more than what the car is actually doing. expecting us to have a uh, predominantly off-road race. Ooh, those brakes, being nearly 25 years old, weren't stopping us there. beaten by an older fellow Honda. Um, I think it's only Hondas up front. There's a Prelude I think in seven uh, in second place. And then there's a version of my car in third and first. Come on. At least we're in the top three. get a podium position I'll be fine. 
another problem with these cars is they feel like a turbo in some respects because unless you're in the right gear at the right revs you've got real very little in the way of power we saw it then when we were about s just below 6000 rpm we were very sluggish it's all because of the uh, the uh, what is it VTEC engine where a lot of the power is up at the top end so you need to constantly move that gearbox around to try and get the best out of it and just very little in the way of broad power strokes it's just very much at the top again no power no power no power no power and here it comes as we go past 6000 to 7000 But regardless, it has given us the win, so I can hardly fault it for the result, just not for the journey getting to that result, quite frankly, because yeah, I'm not particularly fond of them, but it is a Honda dominant uh, race there, every Honda there beating every Volkswagen there, so uh, yeah, Honda beats Volkswagen in this race as, uh, at least, so uh, yeah, there we go. So let's get on to the uh, second race. So that was a point, uh, a circuit race, so now we're on a point-to-point -point race, so I think we need a bit of brute force, a bit of shock and awe. So I think we're going to go for the uh, Corrado VR6. It's got more power than the GTI, as you can see, 6 extra horsepower and 4 extra pounds feet of torque, but actually weighs less, 66 pounds less, and is better balanced as well as it's 58% at the front, not 65, which is yeah, a huge amount of weight at the front, quite frankly. That's easily one of the most heavily weighted... Uh, front to rear biases on this game as far as I'm con I, I know of so uh, yeah let's get in the Corrado it's pretty damn quick as you can see 5.5 acceleration whereas the Civic also was 5.5 but the handling isn't quite as good and neither is the braking yeah so uh, yeah it's gonna struggle in maybe in terms of braking but yeah I do love the uh, Corrado and it's easily one of my favorite 90s cars so uh, hopefully it do well I know it's got slightly less horsepower than the Civic Type R, but it's got way more in the way of torque, which uh, will help. And yes, it weighs more, but the torque will make up for that. And this is one of the few uh, production cars of the time to have a uh, spoiler that raises at a certain level of speed, like that. So, uh, yeah, a bit inventive in that regard, rather than just having a fixed spoiler all of the time. And yeah, it may well have that large V6 engine up front, or VR6 engine up front, in fact, because it's not technically laid out like a normal V6. It's uh, still able to turn in really rather nicely. does not feel like it has a large engine up front. It's got a wider power band as well than the Civic Type R. The torque will help with any uphill sections. Got a pumpkin in an older GTI chasing us. Not something I expected to say today. Those brakes, not very good. Civic Type R like last time. There's a pair of Golfs in front this time around as well. So it's not quite the Honda dominating uh, race that the first one was. Wee! Big jump. Despite not having the same braking capabilities as the Civic, we uh, outbrake them in that corner, so I was a little braver. Out chugging these pair of golfs up the uh, incline because we have the
This isn't the kind of conditions this car's made for. Oh dear. Big puddle. Or like a lake. Oh, just like this one. These are very rough conditions for the little old Corrado here. If I was going to ever have a, like a 10 car garage, I think uh, one of these would definitely find a place because I have a f thing for like weirder kind of engines, ones that are less common than other ones. I think Volkswagen were the only ones to do a V6 kind of engine. And uh, I think they only put it in this and that GTIs that we uh, had to choose from as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely love the engine in this and it's given us a resounding win. Far more so than the Civic Type R did in the previous race. And they are way behind. Wow, more than four seconds behind. The Civic from that we used in the previous race is in six seconds behind. And the CRX that was right up uh, next was in the uh, previous race. In top three is in eighth and uh, yeah more than 10 seconds behind. So yeah, that is a, a big win for the Corrado there. Making up for the uh, Volkswagen's humiliation in the previous race. So yeah, let's get on to the third and final race and see what happens. Right, so for this third and final race we're on another circuit race, but this one's uh, at the mud kickers bit, which we were we went through on that final uh, previous race. So uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to go for a rally car for this. So uh, we're going to go for the rally uh, from Peugeot which is a uh, great little car, only 99 horsepower, but it weighs only 1,742 pounds. So, uh, yeah, very little on the way away. It does actually have the same kind of front dis uh, rear bias as the uh, GTI here, which, considering it weighs very little, is means that there's a, a jump far more of the weight up front than anywhere near the rear. But, yeah, it's not got very a big engine, and it's not going to have any kind of, you know, excess of power to make... Uh, any trouble up the front end so uh, yeah it's also got a great launch as well far better than any other vehicle here and the braking is better as well because it weighs so little and uh, yeah the handling is also better as well because it weighs so little so uh, as you can see I'm hoping that will make a uh, up for the uh, lack of acceleration and top speed but top speed certainly is going to come into this it's only really going to be acceleration so uh, let's see what it can do glitch there, don't know what the hell happened but yeah, love this car, it's again one of my favourites to be added via the uh, Horizon uh, playlist just love its simplicity, simple uh, naturally aspirated small engine see we've got steelies for wheels and uh, yeah it's a car kind of basic hot hatchback that the French do very very well so uh, yeah, have every confidence in this Also, I've not got the uh, lowest of revving engines as well. 7,000 RPM is pretty uh, high revving for a uh, French car. Does not like the water all that much. Not because it might well rust. feel how little it weighs this car. This is such a truckable vehicle. Sounds pretty good as well. We had more classic hot hatchbacks from Peugeot, you know, like the 106 or the uh, 306. I think it was the 306 or the 305, whichever larger version of this was out in the late 90s. They really were at their A game at that time. In fact, it makes me wish we had more French hot hatchbacks from these classic areas in general. The uh, Citroën Saxo, for instance, was a huge success in the late 90s, early 2000s. And not just because it was cheap and 
you know, affordable for pretty much everyone, but because also it was a uh, massively successful car on the modding scene, which I would have thought would have instantly made it a uh, choice for a game like this, but unfortunately not. So many cars out there that we are still missing out on that you'd think would be part of this game or other Forza games. And it's a bit of a shame, really. Still seems to be a bit too much of a focus on uh, you know, the sports cars, supercars, hypercars. And not enough on cars that are actually genuinely iconic. I guarantee if you showed someone one of these versus perhaps a supercar or a hypercar, more people would probably know what a Peugeot is and say, I don't know, a, uh, a Koenigsegg or one of those other kind of cars like a Pagani or, hell, maybe even a McLaren, because McLaren are generally quite faceless vehicles in a lot of ways. It's only really the likes of the Speedtail and the P1 that were where they excelled at their uh, styling department. Every other McLaren looks basically the same as every other one. So that is a bit of a shame that you know we don't have quite as many classic iconic cars as we would hope, but nonetheless this iconic car has pulled out a massive win, despite being the least powerful here by a quite a long shot. And it's only 504 in terms of PI as well, so again one of the lower ones and yet we've beaten the Civic from 97 by more than 5 seconds despite having what 80 odd horsepower less but that lack of weight and the handling and the ex excellent braking really does make this a uh, the Peugeot a fantastic car so yeah three wins in a row there which is the first time in a while I think but yeah nonetheless three great vehicles that we chose obviously there are other vehicles to choose from as well all of us that I prefer to the first vehicle which I was at least but uh, yeah fantastic lot of vehicles to choose from particularly like that Peugeot and uh, yeah if you missed out on it then that's a bit of a shame but hopefully it will reappear at some point if you have yet to have it but yeah that's a cracking car and this has been a uh, cracking video I've had a lot of fun doing this one so yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye